You are listening to Gary Paper Series with Yasser, and today's guest is Dr. Dheeraj Sethi from Quadram Institute, Norwich, UK, to discuss one of his publications, Chlorhexidine Gluconate Usage is Associated with Antiseptic Tolerance in Staphylococci from the Neonatal Intensive Care Units. It is published in JAC Antimicrobial Resistance. Welcome, Dheeraj. Hi, Yasser. Thank, thank you for inviting me to talk to you this morning. Thank you for accepting the invitation. Uh, why you studied chlorhexidine antiseptic tolerance in neonatal ICUs? Okay, um, so there, were, there was a couple of reasons that sort of um, that came together to make this a, an interesting research question. Um, I think if, going back a little while ago, there's been quite a bit of interest in antiseptics and their relationship with antimicrobial resistance. Mm -hmm. Some work previously done uh, in Birmingham with, with by Mark, who, who's, on, who's my supervisor, um, looked at octenidine resistance before and after the introduction of it into their hospital. And they found that as compared with before they used it versus when, when it had been introduced, there was an increase in the sort of um, tolerance or resistance uh, of, of uh, various staphylococci to octenidine. So as a concept, there's a little bit, there's a little bit there to unpack. Um, the reason the NICU makes a good environment to study this, however, is partly because neonatal skin is really fragile. So as a consequence, quite low doses of chlorhexidine or octenidine have to be used. Um, there's a couple of surveys, one from the UK and one from Germany, where we collaborated, where they've done a they've done a survey of the usage of antiseptics and found that very, very low concentrations of chlorhexidine are sometimes used in neonates. And as a consequence, um, there's always this lingering question about whether or not we're inadvertently selecting for resistance or reduced susceptibility. Ah, nice. Uh, okay, so basically because uh, in neonates we use lower concentration of mm -hmm. uh, antiseptics and that's why there is a potential for developing the tolerance. Yeah. And more broadly speaking, there's also the, uh, you know, it's it's unclear what the relationship might be between anti antiseptic resistance and various antimicrobials. Um, for example, if they if there might be shared mechanisms. So clinically, if if uh, if a patient's, or rather if they their isolates or various bacteria in the NICU might be more resistant to antiseptics, that's one thing. But if there's also a relationship or or shared mechanism with antimicrobial resistance, that can have quite real and quite significant clinical implications. Ah, developing the cross resistance across different yeah. antibiotics. Oh, okay. So how you did this? Um, so the study design um, was categorized as what's, what's called a surveillance study. Um, and we were fortunate enough to collaborate with a group in Lübeck in Germany. Mm -hmm. And just to sort of run you through the differences between the two units, um, you know, the Norfolk and Norwich uh, was the UK unit and the Lübeck Hospital was the German unit. Um, they're both what's considered sort of level three or top tier um, neonatal institute, uh, intensive care units. And that means that they deliver, broadly speaking, quite similar types of care. However, a key difference between the two was um, their choice of antiseptic. So the Norfolk and Norwich um, a hospital here has been using chlorhexidine in one form or another for over 20 years, whilst their German counterparts have been using octenidine for a, for a significant period as well. Um, and that meant that, you know, as best we can, obviously there's geographical differences and perhaps differences in the composition of, um, of the diseases that they might see. But broadly speaking, things were fairly well aligned, with a key difference being antimicro um, antiseptic use. Okay. So okay. we collected skin swabs from babies as they were admitted onto the unit and then once a week for the remainder of their stay. Now, um, this, this meant that well, the study ran over three months and this meant that there was a whole number of babies who were in for a very short period for whom we had admission isolates. Mm -hmm. But there was also fewer babies who remained resident on the unit for quite a long time for whom we had, um, you know, serial skin swabs. And we took them from four different body sites including a gut swab from the baby's rectum. Ah, okay. You did quite intense study from two, two different geographical locations. So what is the main finding or what are the main findings of this study? Sure. Um, so there, there were quite a few sort of, quite, quite a few observations that we made. Um, so I, th I think sort of the, the biggest one, well, the, the two sort of main findings that we had, the first was that as compared with the German isolates, the UK isolates were significantly less susceptible to chlorhexidine, um, which, you know, does sort of 
fit our hypothesis insofar as we did wonder if long-term usage of chlorhexidine at low diminished concentrations might select for resistance or reduce susceptibility. And it seems there was some signal to suggest that that was the case. So that was the first um, sort of headline that we made or the head first observation we made. Um, but, you know, it's not entirely clear if that's a geographical thing or if, that's, or if the relationship between susceptibility and usage is entirely clear. So amongst the UK babies who were enrolled in the study, um, we, as I, as I described, we collected isolates on admission and then weekly thereafter. And actually, when we compared the isolates um, from admission as compared with subsequently, there was a clear difference. So that means that patient babies basically acquired skin isolates that were more resistant to chlorhexidine and, and our sort of, you know, the, the, what our interpretation of this was that um, there might be lineages or, or particularly strains resident in the neonatal intensive care unit that babies then acquire when they enter the unit, which then colonize their skin. Oh, and again, this is, you know, this again isn't without precedent. For example, we know that you might get more antimicrobial resistant strains in the healthcare environment where there's different selection pressures to in the community, for example, increased antimicrobial use. Um, but I don't think there's been much evidence previously to suggest that this does occur with antiseptics. Lovely. Okay, so that's uh, like uh, one observation that our hypothesis was uh, the, there will be more resistance in the isolates that are exposed to the chlorhexidine and mm. right. Yeah, and, and interestingly, it's um, we, we didn't see such a relationship with the German isolates where octenidine was in use. So I suppose, I suppose of interest is the absence of this finding in the German unit. So we didn't find a big difference in terms of how susceptible they were to um, octenidine um, uh, in the German unit compared with the UK unit. In fact, we actually found the opposite in that there was quite high levels of octenidine resistance in the UK, which was of interest to us. We, you know, we did look for the possibility of any cross resistance between the two the two antiseptics, but we weren't able to sort of identify any clear mechanisms. So you did uh, study into different geographical locations, and uh, your findings are amazing. So how you see the applications of this study? So I think at the moment. I I, I still sort of it's quite hypothesis generating in terms of you know we've investigated a storyline um, and found that actually you know it bran branches out into further sort of um, you know further avenues that can be explored um, in terms of the clinical impact of this I think clinicians and certainly myself included as a as a clinical as, as a medical doctor um, often do you know overlook perhaps the importance of um, antiseptics in terms of antimicrobial resistance um, a great deal of Importance is placed on on good antimicrobial stewardship, whereby you know you don't want to prescribe extensive or inappropriate antibiotic courses. But the same rationale has never really been been sort of um, you know applied to antiseptics, and perhaps that's because there was never really a strong or growing body of evidence to suggest it was of much relevance. Um, and indeed, over time, there seems to be a growing body that, that of evidence that this is the case. And I think what what we've done and what we've worked on is just one small piece of this broader broader picture that requires further investigation. So I think the first sort of clinical implication is that uh, this will have implications for um, uh, anti um, sorry for infection prevention and control, and and recognizing uh, that there could be you know selection pressures applied by antiseptics. Thank you, Dilraj, for sharing very interesting paper with us. Thank you. That's okay. So thank thank you for your time.